start out here on the overview page, which is the landing page for when users log into Cloud IQ. Uh, the connectivity summary at the top will now reflect connectivity for PowerStore clusters or appliances which may not be part of a cluster yet. And this view lets the user see which, which of their systems are connected or experiencing any connectivity issues like having lost connection or may not be set up yet. The system health section here now also supports Cloud IQ clusters. Uh, this view is a summary of clusters health scores uh, based on the health score range. And this allows the customer to see uh, quickly which systems may be at risk so they can take any needed actions. We now support PowerStore in the capacity approaching full view here. Um, and it is worth noting that we only show historical data for now and not the um, forecast prediction chart. So below this, we have the performance impacts view, which you can see now also supports PowerStore. Um, and this is just a summary of any uh, ex systems experiencing performance impacts and performance anomalies so that the user can easily see if there might be some performance issues that need immediate attention. There's also the uh, systems needing updates view, now supports PowerStore and gives the user a way to easily see which systems are not at target code and need to be updated. And I do wanna point out that PowerStore is not currently supported for the alerts view or the um, reclaimable storage view. So we now support listing PowerStore clusters as part of the um, multi-system listing pages. So I'm gonna start with the multi-system health page here. And this view makes it easy to find out more about health issues um, for, each, for each system. And this view shows a uh, per system score and categories in which there are issues. And um, it enables the user to easily identify which systems need attention most immediately based on the proactive health score. And there's also the ability to filter here based on different criteria like the system, product. So I can narrow this down to just the two power store systems health score, site, and location. Um, you can also customize this view. Uh, this is the card view, and you can change it over to the list view, as well as export to CSV here. So in staying with the topic of health, before I drill into the details for a power store cluster, um, I do want to show that we have support for um, power store in the health issues page here in the left nav, as well as the ability to filter on system. So this just shows um, the issues across all systems in the storage environment, and you can easily uh, and quickly see which systems have the most issues. So from here, I'm gonna drill into the cluster details and cover the health tab, as well as the other supported tabs we have. So the health tab gives the user more information about health issues for that particular cluster, along with a recommended remediation. So for example, here you can see it says the cluster is predicted to run out of space within the quarter. And clicking this, we can see that the resolution would be to free up space through volume deletions and snapshot expirations, or considering adding drives to the cluster or migrating to another cluster. So if you're not familiar with the Cloud IQ Health Score, you should be aware that each category has an associated impact score, which is listed as a negative score value, like the minus five here. And the overall system health is calculated by taking the most significant impact score and subtracting that number from 100. So that's how we get the 95 here. The health score does not reflect the cumulative value of impact scores for all categories. So for example, if I had a minus 10 configuration, the health score would be 90 and not 85 because you're not adding them up. It's just the most significant impact score subtracted. Um, and this isn't power store specific, but it is something worth noting if you're not familiar with how the health score works. And below this, the user can see a history of health issues for the cluster. And that's just helpful to see how the score has changed over time. So in the configuration tab, we have some general configuration information at the top. You can see um, which version of code is running and easily identify if the cluster is not at the expected version or um, has a recommended update, such as in this case. And below this, we have some listing views for uh, appliances, drives, hosts, storage, and this includes volumes, volume groups, and file systems, virtual machines, and storage containers. So next, I'll jump over to the capacity tab. And this view gives a detailed look at the cluster's capacity, including things like the efficiency savings. And there's a donut graph over here um, 
broken down by the capacity being used by the different storage object types. And this lets the user quickly and easily see which object types are using the most capacity on their cluster. Below this is a graph showing the historical trend of capacity over time, as well as the predicted date to fall. So finally, the performance tab. Um, is, this is gonna look familiar to that of other products that we have. At the top, you can see the highest performing storage objects for the categories of latency, IOPS, and bandwidth. And the list is sorted by objects with the highest averages over the last 24 hours. So in the graphs below, um, you can see that the activity is displayed in blue and the gray shading indicates the range of normal and acceptable activity. The performance impact is shown with the pink shading and um, the performance anomaly is showed highlighted in blue. And you can see here that there is an actual performance impact at the cluster level at the time of this anomaly. And you have the standard controls here that we have uh, supported for other products, like I can select this time range and see the highest performing storage objects for that range. So I covered the multi-system listing for health, but we also support it for inventory, capacity, and performance. So I will switch over to the inventory view here. Um, so the multi-system configuration view lets the user easily see which version of code is running on each system and indicates if any systems have any updates that are recommended. Um, users can also see which systems are associated with which sites, since that is the basis of how systems are brought into their Cloud IQ view. And uh, as I showed before with the health, you can uh, filter here based on product type, health score, site, location, and then here you can uh, filter based on storage system code and contract expiration. So next I'll show the multi-system capacity view here. And the capacity listing shows um, overall capacity information for each system. And it also shows the efficiency savings to support the Dell EMC flash guarantee when applicable. Um, and the efficiency ratio is based on savings due to thin snapshots and data reduction. And as I showed previously, you got the filtering here, just like the other pages. And the ability to look at it in list view and export to CSV as well. So finally, the multi-system performance view here gives the user a view of key performance indicators um, across the systems in their environment, such as bandwidth and latency. And let me just narrow this down. Um, and as before, the ability to filter as I just showed. So now I'm gonna select both of these power store clusters. And you can see here, we've got the compare metrics button here. This is gonna bring us to the metrics browser, which you could also navigate to um, here on the left nav, but I'm just gonna compare these two power store clusters. So here we can see graphs comparing the key performance indicators of the two clusters selected in the previous page. And this enables more in-depth performance analysis across the systems. Um, this view can also be easily customized by selecting a different time, uh, time periods here. And you can also customize this view um, into various different ways, regular, compact, and you can even uh, create additional metrics dashboards up here. So the next thing I'm going to touch on is VMware visibility for power store and cloud IQ. So here in the admin section under collectors, so from here, the user would download the Cloud IQ Collector V app and deploy it in its vCenter with the right networking configuration. And they would then continue to the Collector Management UI to configure systems from which to collect data. And VMware data will appear in Cloud IQ within 24 hours and will be accessible from the configuration page for PowerStore or via the global search, which I'm gonna talk about quickly now. So global search now includes the ability to search for PowerStore objects such as appliances, volumes, volume groups, file systems, hosts, and VMs, as I just touched on. So I'm gonna search for the Dell service tag of an appliance. And you can see that we've got two results here, uh, one for the appliance and one for the cluster that the appliance belongs to. 
So now that I've covered um, all the supported features in Cloud IQ, um, this concludes the live demo portion. So I'm going to pause here.